So, you know, they don't seek help at school. But how about mental health? When you look at this, Asian American adolescents don't seek help. So when you compare with white, seeking help from the mental health professionals are a lot lower, and receiving service in the outpatient center is lower, and using the prescription medication that they need is also lower, okay? much lower. Now, then how about the college students? <coughs> this graph, we are comparing with this is actually, uh, this study came out year 2018 by the UK. So it's a health mind study, healthy mind study, which is a, uh, you know, uh, the number of 9,851 students. What they analyzed was that, okay, then who gets diagnosis and who receives therapy, who gets treatment in terms of mental health, right? When you look at the Asian, Asians are substantially lower, right? Use, they have a lower use of seeking help across this. Actually, we had six, I just wanted to make it this three outcomes. Please study. Yeah. Then why? Why, when you're suffering from depression, when you have an ideation of the suicide, why don't you get help? We came up with, so our data shows that, number one, it's because of stigma. But stigma at home. We also found that there is a stigma in the community. The really important thing is this. There was a mismatch. There was a mistrust toward American healthcare system. So these women, when they got depressed, they actually went to therapy one or two times. But they told me over and over again, the therapists don't understand where I'm coming from. They say, the family doesn't matter. You can just forget about the family. <laughs> but they can't. We can They don't understand the fundamental how our DNA works. That's family. A fundamental DNA is family. Is family is more important than myself. Because of that, we decided to create an intervention that is designed specifically to target Asian American women's risk factors and protective factors. Test it out at college Wellesley College, Boston University, and Harvard University. So Wellesley College was studied earlier, several years ago, and they are using AWARE as a standard of care for Wellesley College. And BU, they just hired a Wellesley therapy, oh no, sorry, AWARE therapist that we hired. So BU is going to start AWARE, which is great. And Harvard, I'm in the country, I'm you know, going through the country with Harvard right now. now Really important thing is that we're going to have to promote an umbrella of support. Support should not be given just at home, just by your parents. It has to be from the school, PTO, mentors, religious institutions, as well as community. Example, so Princeton High School in New Jersey heard about aware intervention. So she contacted me and we worked together, and we modified aware intervention, which was only targeted for women, to all genders. And also, uh, we modified in a way that it is shortened so that it can be adaptable in a high school setting. So they created, and they've been using, this is like their second, third year going in, actually. And aware group, they became so close, and they just went to the New York City trip. After they went to the New York City trip, they made a video dedicated to two counselors for use, you know, for uh, managing aware intervention. So I wanted, I got the permission from their parents. So I want to show it to you. It's very short though. One of the students said, "I didn't remember what I did in class that day, but I remember every single aware lesson plan. Learning happens outside this classroom. It doesn't matter how Asian you are, but I learned that no matter how much or little." Asian you are, aware helped me with identity formation and how the Asian inside of my family played a role in who I am, shaping my experience. I think it is really critical, mm -hmm. I want to go back, I think it's really important for us to work with the schools because the schools need to understand 
the unique issues that Asian American young people are facing, and I think the school needs to create a mechanism to help them. And I'm going to urge parents to get involved. I've been in a YouTube public school system, as you know, I have three boys. And my oldest one is uh, Newton North High School, going to Newton North High School, he's graduating. So I've been there for 13 years. And whenever I go to PTO meetings, I really don't see Asian American parents. But it's really critical. You know why it's so critical? Look at this. In 1999, in, 1999 Newton, in Newton, there were 9% of Asian American students. The last 10 years, it grew. Actually, it's 20 years, right? Almost, it's almost 20%. Did, did you realize that? I was, it was shocking for me. But do you know what percentage of the Asian American staffs are working for the school system? <laughs> Somebody's still happy. Five. Four percent. In year 2018, data. So that really does not correspond. You know, it doesn't correspond the needs to, to be able to provide the you know, appropriate need for this growing population in New okay. We're gonna have to fight. Fight against modern minority myth, modern minority myth. Fight for the equity. So long-term advocacy for Asian American students the school system is going to be informed, and we're going to have to really demand the representation, more representation of Asian American teachers, counselors in school system, and more representation of Asian Americans in Congress. Because in Congress, we only have 3% of Asian American Congress, men, women, and others. So we're going to have to take action. And I want you to really think about, when you're leaving here, I want you to think about one question. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but how can we help our community? I'm sure you're here because you are thinking about your immediate children. We all do that. But we have more serious issues. And you have learned today that your child is not going to grow very well unless we all work together. Okay? The home, the school the community, and the society. We all have to work together. Thank you.